Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Sunday School at Christ Church. I'm Miss Nan, and I'm going to be doing the Sunday School lesson today for readers. Now, typically, Miss Eileen, the other teacher, she'd be here um, doing the lesson today, but there was a conflict, and so we switched places. She's perfectly fine, and she'll be back next week to be with you all. Today, we are going to hear a great Bible story about a man who chose peace. But before we do that, before we do anything, we're going to put money in our blessing bags or our piggy bank bags. We're coming up with some, some ideas of what we might be able to do with any money that you've gathered. If you decide not to give it to somebody who needs it that your family knows or wants to support, if you want to do it through the church, we're coming up with some really good ideas and we'll be talking to you, to you about that soon. Now, as you know, I never did make my piggy bank and I don't have my blessing bag at home. So I always put my money in the little wonder box. So I'm going to do that now. Oops, I hope I didn't give you a sneak peek of what else is in my wonder box. Today, our Bible story is going to come from the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And it will be Genesis 13. Now, I noticed, it's you know, right at the very beginning, I noticed that when I read the story, there were a lot of extra little details in there about where they stopped and where they lived and where they worshiped and how far they went and and i thought ah, that gets a little confusing so i'm actually going to kind of tell you the story about this man who chose peace and you can follow along in your bible if you want to or you can just listen to the story i actually encourage you to even if you don't follow along while i'm reading it go back and read chapter 13 it's not that long and once i've explained it i think it'll make the reading a lot easier for you so to give you a little bit of background there was a man named abram and god appeared to him when he was like 75 years old and said i want you and your wife to move to a land that i'm going to give you and i'm going to make you have lots and lots and lots of descendants and i want you to do this and and Abram, that was his name at the time, did. Later, his name changes to Abraham. But that's another really good story. So we're going to be calling him uh, Abram. Sometimes I might slip and call him Abraham. And when he went, he didn't have any kids. Abram didn't. But he had a nephew named Lot. So he and Lot and his Abram's wife and all of his flocks and sheep and Lot and his you know wife and flocks and sheep and everybody we're all up and traveling. So that's where we're going to start with this story. It's a long, long time ago in the Bible. There was a man named Abram. And Abram, of course, had his nephew Lot. And they traveled together in the land of Canaan. Now, they had sheep. Actually, they had a lot of sheep. Get it? <laughs> lot had a lot of sheep. Okay. And God, God blessed them with even more sheep. So many sheep that there wasn't enough land to take care of all the sheep. And Abram's shepherds, the people who were taking care of the sheep, started pushing and getting in fights with lots because, you know, like, no, we want our sheep to graze here. Well, we were here at this water hole first. And they were competing for food and water for the sheep, and it wasn't good. And if they couldn't find more land, then fights would break out between Abram's men and between Lot's men. And the fights might even lead to war. Abram did not want war with his nephew. He wanted peace. And so Abram thought, well, what, what can I do to make peace? We've got way too many sheep. What can I do? How can I make peace with my nephew? Well, they decided they, they needed to go their separate ways. They each needed their own land. They needed enough land for all their sheep and shepherds. Well, fortunately, there were two really big pieces of land that were available. But unfortunately, these two pieces of land were not the same. One of them was wonderful. There was grass, there was trees for shade, there was water. And the other one, not so much. It was dry and arid and kind of icky. So you have one land that's good, in one land that's bad. And think about it, you know, whoever's going to get that bad land is going to be mad. I wouldn't want it. I mean, 
So there's Abram, and he's thinking, hmm, there's a land for me and a land for you. Which should we give to which who gets who? So who would get the land? Well, this is an easy solution, an easy thing, because in the ancient world, it was very simple. The oldest person had the right to pick first, and Abraham was the oldest, so he could pick first. And he would get the good land, and his flocks would just flourish. It'd be a smart thing to do, right? But is that what he did? Abraham probably thought something like, well, this land's really good. That's plain to see. And my flocks would just flourish wonderfully. But I love my flocks and I love the fleece. More importantly, I, I love peace. And although I could give my nephew Lot the worst, I think I'll let him pick first. So Abraham told Lot, you Lot, and have this really good land. Abraham likely knew that having peace sometimes means you have to let other people go first. And it means that making what somebody else wants more important than what you want is sometimes a way that you have to get to peace. So Abram let Lot choose the good land and Abram took the bad land. And they had peace between the two of them. And yet God blessed Abraham and gave him even more land and more sheep and more children and more goats and more cows. And you get the picture. So that is our story from Genesis chapter 13 today. Now, as you may have guessed from what I've just been talking about, our word for this session is peace. And peace means living together in harmony without fighting. And as Christians, we also believe that it means to be calm and to know God's presence. Now, I've said that you guys are plenty old enough to start looking deeper at things and wonder about things. So here are some things that we are going to wonder about. And I have a picture here, kind of, that looks like Abram and Lot, and you can see that this land looks kind of dry, and that one looks green and lush and fertile with um, even birds flying around in it. So here's some questions to think about, and these are questions that you're probably going to have to answer for yourself. I'm not going to be able to help you too much with them. So what does peace mean to you? What does peace look like? When do you feel peaceful? Well, I, I can tell you, like that one, I can tell you when I feel peaceful. And I feel peaceful when I'm in the mountains, like hiking in the mountains, because I'm surrounded by the beauty of nature. And I feel peaceful as a mom. I feel peaceful when I'm home and all my kids are home too. And my husband and the whole family and we're all under one roof. That makes me feel very, very peaceful. And I feel peaceful when I ask God for, for peace because God answers. And if I'm upset about something, I'll ask God to help me calm down and have peace about it. And that, that works. But here's another good question that I like. How do you think that Lot felt in the Bible story? I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I think Lot probably had some mixed emotions there because at first he's probably really upset because he's thinking, I'm going to get stuck with this really bad land and my sheep are all going to die and I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to be able to provide. And then Abram says, well, you can have the good land. And I'm sure his heart leapt with joy. But do you think maybe he thought, well, maybe I shouldn't take it. And yet Abraham was telling him to take it. So he may have been a little conflicted there. And our last question is, what do you think is in the Wonder Box today? So here's my little Wonder Box, and I'm going to pull out what's in here. Now today, we have these on our phone, and we have them in our cars as GPS systems, but this is an old-fashioned map. 
This is a map of a city in um, South Carolina called Greenville. And actually, we were just down there. So that's where I happen to have this map. A map is a guide. And God is a guide. And he can lead us to peace. So that's just something to think about. Now, we're going to, I'm going to show you a craft that you can actually kind of do on your own because it's a pretty easy craft. I sent home with you a couple different documents. There's a celebration bingo part, a celebration bingo chart that um, you can do, you know, throughout the week and you look for things that you've done that are on that chart. And if you get five in a row, I want you to celebrate, even if it's just saying, you know, Whee! or having a glass of lemonade or going outside for just a minute and breathing in the air and feeling God's peace. Just some way to celebrate that you've gotten bingo five in a row. So I sent that home. I sent a coloring page with our word for this session, peace, for fun. And I sent this home, this little camel guy. So this is just going to remind us about how Abram and Lot were traveling. And, you know, when they traveled, they didn't hop in a car. They, you know, traveled by camel or they walked. And when they traveled, it wasn't like you call the moving van and have the movers come and move everything. No, they had to pack up their, their tents and all their sheep and all their camels and donkeys and cows and drive all their people and, and drive them in front of them, it, it was kind of hard to move. So this is to remind us of that. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to color your camel. I colored mine kind of a more realistic camel color. You can do yours any color you want. Be creative. And you're going to need just a regular envelope like here. And then you're supposed to have those little things called brads. They're kind of brassy looking. And they have like a round, like almost a thumbtack on the end. And then it has two little pieces and you stick it through a hole and then you open them up and it holds something in place, but lets you kind of twist it. I didn't have any brad, so I improvised and you'll see what I used. So once you color everything, then you cut it out. And when you cut it out, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to tape or glue either one, your camel head to the back of the envelope so that the front of the envelope has the camel's head. And you're going to do the same thing with the tail. Then you're going to glue, uh, draw, you can either color the whole envelope like brown or whatever color you want for the camel, or I tried to draw a little bit of a camel body on there. So it looks like that. And then you attach legs. Now I, the legs on there, now I, like I said, I didn't have the brads, so I just used twisty ties. And it kind of still works because look, my camel can walk. I'm walking through the desert. And then another fun thing you can do is you can put, almost like you're packing up your camel, put stuff inside that you think Abram and Lot might have taken on their trip. So let's see what I put in there. Because now you got to think they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have a TV. But they probably had a blanket probably had toys like um you know carved wooden toys let's see what else would they have had oh just a basket to carry stuff in they might have i just made this stuff up you make it up too oh look i put a map because they would needed to know where they were going maybe and they also it would it reminds us to rely on god to guide us to where to go and to guide us towards peace um i have a change of clothes and a pan to cook things in. But you can't cook things without a fire. And back then, they probably started fire with flint, like two special kinds of rocks. And when you knock them together, it throws sparks out and helps you start the fire. So that's what I packed up in my camel to represent some things that Abram and Lot would take on them on their journey. <laughs> okay, now we're going to play a game. Good stuff. And it's called the Go Your Own Way game. Here's what we're going to do. I need to get to my page. So what we're going to do is you, you're going to need a chair. And um, if you think the statement, let me back my chair up because I have to stand up. If you think that the statement I read is correct or true to you, 
you sit in the chair. And if you think that the statement I read is not true or not true for you, then you stand up. And if you're not really sure, because sometimes it might be right and sometimes it might not be right, you're going to go right here in the middle. You're not standing up. You're not sitting down. You're kind of in the middle. So I'm going to sit down and read these to you so I don't give you any hints. And but I will, well, actually, I'll give you this hint. There are no right and wrong answers to most of these. And I found a lot of times I was in the middle. So here we go. I'm going to read the first statement. Apples are better than oranges. Well, if you think that's true, you stay seated. If you like oranges better than apples, stand up. And if you're not really sure you like them the same, you go in the middle. Here's the next one. Superman is better than Batman. If you agree, stay seated. If you don't agree, you stand. If uh, then you're in the middle. All right, here's one. It's okay to talk while someone else is talking. All right, the next one. It is hard to make peace. You should always let someone go before you. You, meaning each of you, so I'm going to say I, I am peaceful, meaning you are peaceful. You are a peaceful person. You only have to be peaceful at church. Here's the last one. God loves me. Now, right now, I expect that every single one of you is sitting down because that is so true and God does love each and every one of us. But some of these, I think that the purpose of this game is to let us know that everybody's different and situations are different. And so there's different ways that you can address things and be right or make peace. Let's, let's take this one. It's okay to talk while someone else is talking. Okay, well, let's say you're at the pool and you're having, you know, it's a pool party and everybody's fun. Everybody's talking. Is it okay to talk? Yeah, because everybody's laughing and talking and having a good time together. So that's okay. And if you didn't talk, would your friends kind of think, well, why didn't she talk? Why isn't he saying something? You know, is he mad at me? Is there something wrong? I mean, they, so that would not necessarily bring peace. Let's take the other extreme. You're in school and the teacher's talking. Is it okay to talk to them? We all know the answer to that. No. And if you talk, is there going to be peace in that classroom? No, you're probably going to be in trouble. So it's to help us realize that there's different ways to look at different situations and not one hard and fast rule towards making peace with others. Um, sometimes it's really hard to know where to go or, or what to do. And it's really good that God can guide us with the Bible and just through, um, you know, our, uh, through the Holy Spirit, kind of how you feel. Like, you know that if you're at the pool and you're having fun and you're laughing, that's all fun. You're talking and other people are talking. And because you're, you kind of just know that, I mean, you're having a good time and that's the Holy Spirit helping you and helping guide you. Sometimes we're um, different and we choose different ways of doing things in different ways, but we all want to always work towards making peace and keeping peace and being peaceful. So to end, we are going to do a movement prayer together. And I want you to say these words after me and do the same movements that I do for our closing prayer. So stand up and Sometimes I go one way, and then I want you to step in either direction. But sometimes I go one way. Sometimes I go another way. But no matter where I go, I am guided by God's peace. All right, that's it for our lesson today. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Miss Eileen will be with you next week. And I want to remind you that right below the link for the Sunday School lesson is a link for Mr. D's music class. And that is such a great class and such a fun class. And you can learn so much 
So I encourage you to tune in to Mr. D and have a wonderful music class too. Bye, see you soon.